And I didn't yes. know pairing cookies with wine was such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it is. I guess it's a dessert wine, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> we need to be, so. Oh. All right, yeah. so. Happy Valentine's Day. I know, day. right? Yes, yes. It's love day. It is, it's special day. day, special yeah. day. Yeah. Did you do anything special? For Chris for Valentine's Day? I did. So we don't exchange gifts anymore. We haven't done that in yeah. several years now. And so last night, he said, I got something for you. And I'm like, because you know what happens then. I don't have anything to give back. Yeah. So it's it just, it's a bad situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Husbands shouldn't do that. Yeah. Especially when you decide together, you're not doing gifts. And so he pulled out an Amazon box. He wrapped it nicely. He hands me the box. He said, you know, this is the best I can do. I'm like, I know. So I open it up. It's a new pair of pajamas. Oh. <laughs> he said, you needed these. Oh. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, OK. I wear pajamas until they're like really beyond their usefulness. I'm Are you one of those. Like they have built in air conditioning. Is that? Yeah, the I just I use them. They're really yeah, they get worn out. I see. So I said, OK, I'll take that as a gift. <laughs> you know, in Texas, we say jamas. Jamas. Yeah. yeah. In Wisconsin, they must say jammas. Jammies. Jammies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you're right. Yeah. yeah, you're right. PJs, all different words for them. <laughs> tomato, tomato. That's yeah. right. Potato, That's right. potato. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to tell on you for a second because oh, okay. you know, she and I usually don't exchange Valentine's Day gifts either. But, you know, uh, Lisa and I had talked. Some of you may notice Lisa is very creative. She's very crafty. And Lisa has gotten into wreath making here lately. And so she, um, I talked to her about it and commissioned mm -hmm. her to build yeah. me a, a <laughs> wreath. My wife loves purple. Yeah. And so she did this beautiful wreath that has welcome on it. And I gave that to her, you know, all of Lisa's hard work. I just said, here, I made this for you. I just, you know, <laughs> Which she believed. No, she didn't believe that for a second, but oh. just, she was blown away with that. Right, just, right. So. It was very purple. It was very purple. Yes. Very I threw purple. as much purple yeah, in it as I like could. If you like purple, I'll show you a picture of it. Come on up, I'll show you later. But oh. it was beautiful. Well, Lisa's got a real knack for this, let me just tell yes. you. Yes, yep. I she's not only creative in a lot of ways, she's also creative from a hand yeah. working type yep. thing. It's like a little hobby I do on the side. So. Very cool. Yep, just for fun. Very cool. I cannot hang pictures. No. <laughs> oh. Maybe use pajamas, but not pictures. <laughs> okay. <so>. No. Nope. <laughs> well, let's get into our trivia question today. Okay, and it's Valentine trivia today, and the winner will receive a bottle of wine. Ken? Oh, oh yes. Yep. Bottle of wine. Tell us what kind it is. Riata Three County. This is a peanut knower. <laughs> That's a, that's a fine wine. It's a fine wine? Yeah, okay. a peanut. Okay. Yeah, I love a peanut. They make it with peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're going to call Michelle, this goes for here in the room and also out in TV land, call Michelle at 336-389-4103. And the question is, which English king declared Valentine's Day a holiday in 1537? Which English king declared Valentine's Day a holiday in 1537? Okay. Okay. Well, right. People might have to Google that. Okay. I, I don't know if that's a well-known fact. So, all right. well, Michelle's phone over. line is open. All right. Let's see if we get an answer here. Okay. A correct answer. Okay. Yes. All right. So, we always like to start with COVID, and really, there's not much to say about COVID. There really isn't. I like that. I think we've got maybe one IL resident that mm -hmm. has, at the moment, that's yep. on our list that we know of. Yep. Um, not had any in healthcare center, not having any staff issues that I'm aware of. So, got a winner. Okay, we got a winner. We have a winner. We have a winner. We have a winner. Okay. But I will tell you, um, and this is just, I think this is FYI interesting for you all. Um, you know, we had our outbreak back right before, maybe right after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. right before Christmas, we had an outbreak of the COVID yep. and it was interesting because we were we were early on that mm -hmm. because now um, several of our sister communities are having major outbreaks of COVID right now so it just just seems to make its track along and just gets you know we know it's very contagious um, 
But you know, again, the, the big thing about COVID right now, at least, is it seems to be, even though it's very contagious, it just doesn't seem to be as viral as something like that. I think people that have had the flu have had worse symptoms than the people that have had COVID, right. to be quite honest with you. We yes. just see a lot more flu going around right now. But, yep. but yeah, right now, so far, and I'm knocking wood, that, you know, we really haven't had much COVID here of late, so. <laughs> He was, knocking wood, he's, he's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know actually what this does, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so I think that's that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully Absolutely. we can stay that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, spend a little bit of time on the Curana Clinic yeah. coming to River Landing soon. Yes. We had our meeting last week, which went great. Um, it, one thing, a follow-up from there, they did share that they're working on the insurances, so they're going to uh, get us a list of all those. We had several folks ask different insurances. It, it's surprising how many insurances are out there just within our own, our own population here. Yeah. Um, but there's probably thousands of, among the United States, but they are verifying all those, and as soon as they get um, full verification, then they're going to send us a list so we can put out to all of you. So they're close. Yeah, and the initial so. word we got is that so far all the ones they've checked on, yes. they have. So I think um, there was just two left. They were still waiting on verification. One is, and he's so. not here. I wish he was. One was Kerry Gustafson. You know, Kerry, we're not going to approve yours, but I mean, everybody else is. <laughs> our oh, Barb's there. Oh, Barb. <laughs> I'm sorry, Barb. I'm, you can tell Kerry has said that. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. No, we got, I think they said they were down to two, that they were yes. still researching, but right. everybody right. else so, we're so close. far has been good. So. And I have been asked again about United Healthcare, which they stated that they have verbal approval, just waiting on written approval. Yeah. So, yeah. at this point. You all need to remember, they, they're not just in North Carolina, they're in 31 states. So, you know, the fact that they're in 31 states means that they have a lot of insurance companies that they get approved through. So mm -hmm. I had a good feeling that a lot mm -hmm. of, the, even the more obscure insurances that right. we have with right. our residents, I had a good feeling that they were going to probably be good on most of those. So that's a good sign. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, so we're, we're working on transition plan. Yeah. Um, the end of this month, there will be transition time. So we'll be getting out a memo, kind of sharing how that's going to look the last week of February. Yeah. Because um, you can understand there'll be transition of items, equipment, things like that from the atrium clinic to the Curana clinic. So there will be some downtime in the clinic that we'll, we'll be announcing that and sharing with you what that's going to look like. Yeah, because we're going to try and spiffy things up a little bit in the clinic. Yes. We've got some training. New signage, things like got, that. You know, yeah. like, like you said, atrium has to come and get some of their stuff out. Right. You know, Curana needs to move their stuff in. So there's going to be a little bit of transition there yep. we've got a whole extra day though it's leap year we do it's yeah extra, right. extra day. you're right yes. that's true that's true i'm not sure how that helps <laughs> yes that's good I, <laughs> I don't think it does yes. yep but we're very excited about i'm we very are. excited about we are. Coming in. Yes. i think it's going to be yep. great for us and if you still need to get a consent form they passed a lot at the meeting last week but they're also in the hallway right near your office, mm -hmm, Ken. Mm -hmm. So right there across from the library. Ken's already taken 20 of them. So. <laughs> yes. Is that what happened? Yes. <laughs> I'd like to give my consent as often as I can. Yeah. Oh, so if you need one of those, that's there. And you, once you've completed it, you can take it down to the clinic and they will have it then. And the big grand opening is Monday, March 4th. So The only day of the year that is a command, March 4th. Ah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow. wow. I knew as soon as you started down that road where you were going, I knew you were going to get that response Ooh. from everybody. There was a oh, lot we're of we're just getting more up. Oh, yeah. oh, boy. I've got more. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Anybody want more cookies and drinks? I think yeah. maybe we need to pull out some alcohol down. We might need to. Oh. Uh, uh. All right. Good okay. deal. Okay. Where should we go next, Tom? So yeah, I you know I'll talk about this for a second. I was just um, I was just in a four-hour meeting about our merger um, coming up, and so I have a lot to share with you that I can't right now. So, um, but you know I think the reality is this is still moving forward. You know today was more about um, the management teams from the Wellspring Group and with Brightspire kind of coming together, and so. If any of you came at the, to the clubhouse today to eat, you probably saw us in the um, in the tea side room. And you know, I'm just going to tell you, you know, at first, you know, this was a little bit like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? That kind of stuff. 
And just the more I've gotten into this, the more it feels comfortable to me that this is going to happen and that, you know, I, th I actually think this is going to be a good thing for us here. Um, you know, they're working on a new name and a new mission statement, a new vision statement. And so um, it's not going to be um, Wellspire or <laughs> Spire, Bright, Bright Spring. It won't be any of those, I can tell you that. They're all taken at this point. So, um, but. You know, I think pretty shortly they're going to be announcing all this. That, and the reason I can't really share that with you right now yet is that um, it hasn't kind of gotten to the board level yet. It's, it, that's coming up starting next week. And so I really think that the plan is that they're planning to come out again and do a, a presentation for the residents sometime in that mid-March time frame. And then you will all will know everything there is to know at that point. But as you might guess, there's just a process that has to be done to do this. So... Mm -hmm. uh, but got a chance to, I got a chance to be with the executive directors for the village of Brookwood and for Wellspring, and um, they're good folks. Um, you know, their their management services team there are good folks. You know, we just, I think it's blending very well together. Um, I don't know how they're going to fit all the people in that little office they got up there mm -hmm. at the at the corner of our property. So, and and you know, I think we've mentioned this before. In likelihood, they're going to end up probably having to expand that building or adding on to it because that is going to be, at the moment, from what I'm hearing, that is going to be the main hub for the new management services office is right on the corner of our property here. But I have put a request in for a wall and a moat, and um, <laughs> so far they've been turned down. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm working on that. So no, I'm kidding. It, it's just, um, I think it's going to be good. And you know, when they moved, you and I can talk about this a little bit. When, when Brightspire moved out to our campus mm -hmm. all those years ago, yep. I have the date in my phone. Yeah. So every anniversary of it, I send something to all the corporate saying, you know, happy ninth anniversary on our property, you know, that kind of thing. And so kind of just, you know, they kind of chuckle every time mm -hmm. I do that. Keep but, track of it. <laughs> but you know, really it's been some of God, to me, I think it's kind of a godsend that they're here on the property. You know, you, got, you all get a chance to see them when they come down to eat here, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know, for all the bad thoughts that went through my head about them moving on the property, none of that really has materialized. It's really been a great relationship, and they're very supportive of what we're doing here. And so I, I think that'll continue on with the merger, too. So we'll see how that goes. So that's just a brief update. I wish I could share more, but um, that's, there's a timing process. Yep. That you that. Okay, St. Andrew's project update. Yeah, so we started on Monday. So um, there was a lot of noise going over there on Monday as they were tearing apart the first four rooms. They have, remember there's 16 rooms over in St. Andrews. Um, they tore apart the first four rooms. And so um, I don't know how many of you have actually been into one of the St. Andrews rooms before, but they're, they're not that large. They're, they're more just bedroom size really what they are. But the one thing that I've always didn't like about the St. Andrews rooms was there's a huge closet that's right in the middle of a wall where a great dresser and a TV could be, and it just takes up the entire room. So, you know, one of the things we're doing is removing that wall, move, removing that uh, that big chest thing that's in there. And they said it was amazing once they started ripping the chest out how much more room that room looks like. So, I think it's going to be really good. We need to put out a flyer next Tuesday, the twentieth, at ten o'clock. 10 a.m., thank you. Next Tuesday at 10 o'clock, I've got now commitments from the architect and from the construction company to be able to come here in the multi-purpose room and just do a little uh, presentation to show you if you're interested in what's happening over there, they're going to show you what's going on over there and what they're going to be doing and the staging of it and everything. So if you're interested in that, write that down. Next Tuesday, the 20th at 10 o'clock is when they're going to be coming in and doing that. So. Um, and we'll put something out, Cindy, right? We'll put something out on Care Merge? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So I think you all might be interested in that. I think that's okay. it. Okay. You know, you all saw we had to, we've cordoned off a part of the parking lot again, cause, you know, so we have a place for the workers to come and for them to, you know, to take the stuff out that they're demolishing and, and a lay down mm -hmm. area for them to take the stuff in. Sure. So. But what's nice is with our new parking lot back here, yeah. it gives us space no, to be able to relocate. Space. Yes. Yep. So it's good. Okay. Really good.
Okay, some announcements, reminders. Uh, the 2024 Senior Games registration, that's going on right now. So the 2024 Greater Greensboro Senior Games, which now we're one of the um, sponsors of, um, it's Olympic style athletics to silver arts, including visual, performing heritage and literary arts. Um, like I said, we are a sponsor of that and we're encouraging residents to participate in that. So if you're interested in that, please see Courtney Bless in wellness. Um, she will help you with that. So that's do you fun. know if, Do you know if yodeling is one of the sports? I didn't see it on the list. Okay. You know, no. Yeah, I don't think yodeling is on there. I don't okay. So. I don't think so. But if you wanted to do it here, I'm sure you could. Okay, yeah, I'll talk to Courtney about that. Okay, yeah, okay. okay very good. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, chaplains do a lot of yodeling, don't you think so? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. We've had a sewer line repair that back behind the Harbor Town building here, and we've gotten that repaired now, just doing some more work to be able to cover up the sidewalk and all that good stuff. So we anticipate being able to open up that lower level Harbor Town entrance um, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So that's our hope at this point. So. Yeah, one, we will put up a notice once. One that's, thing that I think that's you up. all will find very mm -hmm. interesting about that. So we were always surprised that there wasn't a clean out for that sewer. Usually when they build these kinds of lines in them, they build a clean out in them. And so Kevin was telling us this morning that, um, that there was a clean out that was built into it and it was right underneath the sidewalk that's there and that nobody, that the people that had put the concrete in had just gone right over top of it. And so it's kind of hard to have a clean out if you can't get to the clean out. So we're fixing that problem as it is, yep. but Sure enough, there was a clean out there. It's because we were going to put one in because we're like, we can't believe they didn't put one in. So yep. kind of interesting. Things you find out, yes. And I think it's the clean out is what caused the problem. It is. Because it is. they had smashed the top of the clean out to put the, you know, keep to get it back down below surface so that yep. they could put the concrete over and the top root, of it. And the roots just grew down and in the roots from grew down into, trees nearby. Uh, guess what? They grew yep. down into the pipe. Yep. So crazy. Hmm. Um, yep, River Landing is also partnering with Habitat for Humanity in Greensboro. We're going to have an opportunity to spend a day working on building a house and have a Christmas card competition here to design the next Habitat for Humanity Christmas card. So that's pretty neat that they've reached out to us. They're going to give us a month to do some design, send it off to them, and then I believe it's in June they'll be doing some judging for it. But River Landing will be the designer of the cards this year. So. That's pretty cool. So we'll have more information coming out on that. So that'll be for the month of March that it's gonna be open to everyone here to do that. So that's pretty exciting. That's coming soon. Um, employee reverse raffle, which is March 1st. Um, still working on selling tickets to our employees. So that process is still going on. We have almost 50 volunteers. So thank you all for supporting that. Um, so I, we might have more volunteers coming than we do staff. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, let, let's hope not. No, 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 no. <laughs> we need to sell some of the tickets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that is it is kind of interesting. You know, we've done these reverse raffles oh. with residents, you know, year after year after year, and you know now invariably we put it out for sale. And in they're one gone week, they're all sold. Week, week yeah. and a half, right? Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. It hasn't been that way with the staff. It right? It's a little slower like, sell yep. with the staff. Yep. And, so we're and staff wait to last minute a little bit more. Residents are very good at getting things early and get it done. And staff are a little bit on the other side. So <laughs> we're still trying to sell some tickets. So I think we'll get there, though. I'm hoping so. So yeah. we're, we're trying we'll really hard. We're, we're trying hour. really hard. Even though that means Lisa has to buy all the rest oh of the tickets, gosh. we're going to get there. Right, Lisa? <laughs> oh, my goodness. OK. Um, upcoming event, Ken, I'm going to have you share this one. Our annual service of remembrance is this Sunday at 4 o'clock. We had to take a hiatus from that gathering mm -hmm. during COVID. Right, but right. We're back, we were back last year and uh, back again this year, and we will honor and remember 49 of our residents 49. Wow. Uh, who blessed our community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've invited their families to come, and some of their family members will be here. Um, to help us do that, but it's important for us as a community, right. I think, to gather right. and, yeah, Absolutely. and to celebrate these Absolutely. lives. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Now, it starts at four o'clock, but the harpist that's gonna come play will start prelude music at 345. And she's very, very good. So You'll you wanna come early. Come early. Come okay. early, yep. 
That's a that's a great service. Very good. I, yeah, very it good. is. Thank you for doing it that. Is, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, reminder from Furl. The Free University of River Landing, FURL, began its sixth year with a robust turnout of 657 registrations for the 15 spring semester courses, so that's, that's a great number. Class rosters will be available February 16th in the spring 2024 semester notebook on the lobby credenza. Um, the first 2024 class will go underway February 19th, and the final spring class will be May 15th. The FURL work group is very appreciative of the time and energy the instructors put into their offerings. In addition, a special salute to resident services, Allison Frostman and Ariel, for the excellent job they did in conducting the registrations. Um, FURL relies heavily on the willingness of residents to share their backgrounds, talents, interests. Um, so if you know of anybody that's interested in doing that for the next semester, so they're always planning ahead, um, please make sure you let anybody know that's in the FURL work group. And that group consists of Kay Heflin, who's the facilitator and resident council representative, at-large members and year terms end, Wiz Horner and Helen Shields, Jim Mapry and Susan Sitnick, Dick Cull and Lois Edwards, and resident life, um, Allison Crossman and Cindy Hawks helps with that. So, very good. Now, if classes end on the 15th, does that mean exams start on the 16th? Yes. I think there's no <laughs> testing involved. Oh, that's Thanks. nice. It's the best class you that, can have. Yeah, that's very nice. I like that. You can that. just enjoy the class. Fail, I think. <laughs> that's right. You can just enjoy the class. Nice. Not have to worry about tests. <laughs> if you show up, oh. you pass. If you don't show up, you fail. I think yeah, that's I, see. It is, so. I see. Oh. Um, so we have a, some team member updates. So the first one, we're going to have a little change in our resident life team. So Ariel has, Ariel has given her two-week notice. So we're going to be having a change there. She's our activity coordinator. Um, she is pursuing some bigger opportunities that are closer to her career goals. So talked with talked with her today. So we have that coming up. So you'll see some changes. We are ready. We're advertising for that position. So if you know of anybody in that area, um, activity world, um, please send those names my way. So um, also this past week, which you all would have seen on Care Merge. Uh, one of our security guards, Kenny Thomas, passed away at a very young age, 54 years old. Um, he'd been with us about six years. Six years, yeah. Um, and his service will be here on Friday. Friday, so, two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, and residents are, I, I've had residents ask me if they could come to that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's at two o'clock. So we'll, on we'll put that up on Care Merge to that update to the notice that's on there. Kenny worked so. mostly, um, and maybe if you're a night mm -hmm. owl or early morning mm -hmm. person, you might have seen him. He mostly yeah. worked yeah. third shift for yeah. us, but. I tell you what, you didn't see Kenny without a smile on his no, face. No, he's a he great just, man. Just, yes. uh, just very easy going and just, you know, just a great guy to work with. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll miss him dearly for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so we also could use some prayers for one of our directors. Yeah, let me talk about that okay. for a second. I was wondering if you were going to bring yes. that up. So, so um, I don't, and I asked him if it was okay to share this, but um, Joe Rojas is in the hospital right now. Um, he, um, he's been having some intestinal issues, and some of it's kind of linked back to, I think, some issues he had from mm -hmm. before. Um, yeah. But um, I think that what's going on now is a little bit different than what he had before, but kind of in the same kind of area. And so he, um, he went in the hospital yesterday. They did a scope today. Um, they had, know what the issue is, but they couldn't, they can't fix it the easy way. They have to, looks like he's gonna have to have some surgery. So. And he might be out for quite a while, is what we're hearing. So I just want to share that with you to kind of just ask you to be praying for him and his family. And I think most of you know Jolene, that's his daughter. And so, um, you know, just, um, just kind of your thoughts and prayers with the family would be good. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's if, you have, if you've looked at Joe lately you have, and you know Joe, you, you can tell something hasn't been right with Joe. And, you know, quite honestly, he's lost a lot of weight in the last three months. And so he just hasn't not been able to eat. And drink normal and so you know so I, I'm glad that they finally found that right. what was going right. on as of Monday he didn't know what was going on now right. as of today at least he knows what's going on and so you know hopefully you can get in there and fix it and mm -hmm. get him back here so yeah. Yeah. but you know like I said just thoughts and prayers for him mm -hmm. and his family would be great yes yeah. mm -hmm. okay anything else Tom that you can think of that 
We didn't get a chance to talk before the we show did today. Not get a so chance to talk, so <laughs> anything else that you? I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I just I'm excited about Kirana. I really mm -hmm. think that's going to be really great. I'm excited about the St. Andrews project. You know, we um, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> we um, I've been hearing. You know, we, being with the other executive directors today, you kind of hear a little bit about you know what's going on in your community. You know, mm -hmm. what are the big hot buttons and. You know, it was interesting to hear the executive director for Glen Eyre, because you know they're moving, still moving mm -hmm. residents into their 192 mm -hmm. new apartments that they have. And so, I was listening to him a little bit about today about some of the stuff that's going on in Glen Eyre, and I'm like, yeah, I'm glad we're not doing that. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad. You it's know, a lot. that's a lot. It's to a move lot in. of people yes. and a lot of new faces yes. and. You know, a lot of folks getting used to what it's like to live sure. in a retirement community. You all know right, what this right. is. I mean, it's, it's you transition. don't just come in and just have things just happen naturally and right. work the way you want them to. It's, there's, a, there's an adjustment period. Mm -hmm. I mean, you all know that. Thinking about having 192 apartments, you know, being filled over a six-month period of time and having them all come in at once, that's quite a, that's quite a project. Yeah. So, um, so I told him, I said, you know, I really feel bad for what you're doing. I know how hard it is. And I said, if you need any help, please don't call me, okay? So, <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I just said, mm -hmm. you know, we'd be happy to help out in any way we can. We know we got that here, right? But not 192 at once, right. unfortunately. Right. That's a lot. Okay. Okay, we're to Ken. I, I have a second trivia question. Oh. Oh, okay. My second us. trivia question is, when is the last time Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day was on the same day? Oh. Most of you were alive. 2018. No. Okay. Good, try. Good guess. Good try. 1945. Ooh. Wait a minute. That was pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, it, it, is it is happening this year, it's happening in 2029, and that's the last time for this century. You're kidding. Wow. It's pretty rare, actually. Oh, okay. Yep. And it, it's, it, the reason it's rare is because people can't decide what color to wear. Sure. <laughs> you know, it, we, we had an Ash Wednesday service in yes, here at noon, yes. and uh, a, a, a little boy and his mother went to an Ash Wednesday service, and they came back, and the, the little boy was asking about the, the dust, we return to dust and stuff like that. What's that about? Well, it's about life and death, and we come from dust, and we return to the dust. And about two hours later, he comes into the kitchen and says, Mommy, I looked under my bed, and somebody's either coming or going. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you redeemed yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, we have some funnies. <laughs> okay. If you can't read it, I'll read it for you. I replaced my rooster with a duck. Now I wake up at the quack of dawn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah, right, right, right. There's got to be at least one groaner. All right, let's see. I've got to turn on the flipper. That'll, that'll make it work better. There you go. <laughs> Apparently, exercise helps you with decision making. It's true. I went for a run this morning and decided I'm never going again. <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of my friends who cannot handle their alcohol. Last night they dropped me three times while carrying me to the car. I, I'm not going to tell you which residents submitted that to me today. <laughs> okay. Now this, I would change the, uh, the wording for this, but your grandparents waiting in line for Star Wars, 1977. Yeah. Th those were some interesting 1970 styles, wow. which brings us to this one. I'm so glad I grew up in the 70s. I did so much stupid stuff, and there is no record of it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's not true. Yeah, right? it is. <laughs> sometimes I think I'm reasonably intelligent, and sometimes I click the remote car door lock a second or third time for extra lockiness. <laughs> Okay, admit it, who does that? I do that I all the time. I, four. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, love it. No matter how bad your day seems, just remember that someone out there has to clean the bathroom at Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have, I have categories, and some are called groaners, and that's that one. <laughs> mm. I did some financial planning, and it looks like I can retire at 99 and live comfortably for 11 minutes. <laughs> that 
that's good. They did a good job. Good. Did a good that's job. Good. Your resume says that you're quick in mathematics. What's 17 times 19? 35. That's not even close, but it was quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, now this is an interesting one here. I'm the oldest sister, I make the rules. I'm the middle sister, I'm the reason we have rules. <laughs> I'm the youngest sister, rules don't apply to me. <laughs> okay, how many of you are youngest, middle, old, and resonate with that, yeah? Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Tom, what are you, are you a? Well, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I had, it's too hard to explain. I, okay. We had a break in our family, so it was three, uh, my brothers and sisters are all, that are older than me, I, I was oops number one, and my brother was, the younger brother was oops number two, so we kind of started over again. <laughs> Doing, so. so I'm a little bit of the oldest and a little bit of the middle. Of the okay, very good, very good. This says an elderly man is stopped by the police around 2 a.m. and is asked where he is going at this time of night. The man replies, I'm on my way to a lecture about alcohol abuse and the effects it has on the human body, as well as smoking and staying out late. The officer then asks, really? Who is giving that lecture at this time of night? The man replies, that would be my wife. <laughs> That's a good one. I wonder if he got any continuing education units for that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they Could get that. Could that be a furrow class? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are rodents, not meteorologists. <laughs> Although Phil says there's going to be an early spring, didn't he? Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. But they're not meteorologists. I just want to reiterate that. That's cute. <laughs> I just paid for a 12-month membership to the gym, and my bank called to see if my credit card was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> That's when your credit card company knows too much about yeah, you. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a new hairstylist. My pillow gives me a new hairstyle every morning. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some of those. They're, they're quite creative. Today, I realized the word bed actually looks like a bed. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does if you have a headboard and a footboard. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it kind of works. Interesting. There's a fine line between a numerator and a denominator. Only a fraction of people will find this funny. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last one. <laughs> I love it. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Good, good, good. <laughs> Okay, oh, down boy. to the trivia I can't, question. I can't wait you to ready? find out, though, yes, okay, which king the, it was. The question, which English king declared Valentine's Day a holiday in 1537? Anybody so, want to guess? He has a song named after him. Seven? Seventh or eighth? Seventh or eighth. Okay, Henry the Eighth. Yes. I'm in a radiate, I am in a radiate, I am, I am. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, Herman's Herman and the right? Yeah, Herman's Herman's. Herman's yeah. Herman's. <laughs> <laughs> and see. everyone was at Henry. Uh, yes. <laughs> and the winner today is yeah. Jim Morse. How about that? Uh, yes, oh, yes. I don't know that he's ever won before, so maybe once. So, congratulations, Enjoy your Jim. peanuts, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> your liquid peanuts. Yeah, they're wonderful. Oh, very so good. So, I know that we only had one answer about your second trivia question, but we decided that they were going to get all the leftover cookies. Isn't oh. That we decided so you get all the leftover cookies because you got the closest to the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> she actually seems excited about that. That's good. <laughs> So we don't want to take any cookies home, so please, everybody, feel free to take some cookies yes, on yes. the way out the door, too, today. Yes. So, yep. Lots good. of good cookies. Yeah, yeah, lots of cookies How about everywhere. a hand to Lisa for making everywhere the cookies today. for us today? Thank you. And for Cindy, who, who finished them off for me, because I yeah. had to come yes. on stage. Now, so, I will tell you, Cindy makes some mean popcorn. So we were Yes, gonna... she does. Maybe next month, popcorn. Popcorn for all. <laughs> oh. Should we tell that story? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Tell the story, Lisa. You tell it first. Okay. So Cindy is 
she came into my old position. I used to be director of resident services. And then Cindy came on board, took my position, and in all the years prior to that, that role always did the popcorn at the car show. That was always in charge. Director of resident services was always in charge of the popcorn making. Mm -hmm. So when she took my role and I moved up to this role, I passed that on to her. <laughs> Like any good director would. Yes. You pass that down to the next person. It's the worst job in the world. I'm telling you now, it is not fun. It's hot at the car show, and then you have the steam coming from the popcorn maker. You burn yourself on the kettle. It's an awful job. Okay, so if anybody wants you to ever do it, just say no. Because it really is, it's not fun. It's not fun. We have had a resident that volunteers every year to do it, and God, God bless, bless them. Yeah, I, God I don't. Them. I don't know. I know. I know. Because it's an awful job. Ice cream. Ice cream would be better to do, especially in in the hot weather. So I passed it down to her. So the first year she did it, I was very happy to pass it down to her. At the end of the day, she came and found me, and I'd found a job that was under the tent, because I was in a new role. So I picked a new job. She comes over to me at the end of the car show. She looked awful. She really did. She was hot, sweaty. Her hair, you all know Cindy, she's always very well put together. She's just so beautifully put together. Hair, makeup, clothes, everything. So she comes over, her hair is matted to her head. <laughs> she's really looking sad. I mean, it's just not, not good. And I said, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> And she just looked at me and she was not happy with me. So now we like to tease her about making popcorn because it's like her favorite job. <laughs> but not really, not really. So, so anybody that's new that joins the team, she tries to pass it off that, didn't you know your job was to do the popcorn? But it's not work yet. So, but we'll keep working on that. We'll keep trying, so. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I know. I know. We'll we'll keep trying to find somebody else to take it on. So we're working on it. I thought yeah. Cindy was going to kill me though because the next year for our pre-planning meeting for the car show, I suggested buying pre-pop popcorn, and she, I thought she was going to kill me when I said that. So. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think we're going to repeat that for TV land. No. Uh, <laughs> there was a question for the audience. We don't need to repeat it. <laughs> Not that we know of. Let's just leave it at that. Oh. Well, thank you for spending 40 minutes with us for on Valentine's Day, yes. having cookies yes. with us, and you know, just sharing a little bit of time together. And um, you know, we just we this is an appropriate day, I think, to say it, how much we love you all very much, and. Um, we just really, um, it, I've mentioned this before, but it's so easy to come into work because it doesn't feel like work to us. I mean, it feels like we're coming in and being with friends and family, and um, it's, just, it's just a real special place here. I hope you all recognize really how special we have it here. And when I hear a little bit about what's going on in some of the other retirement communities and all, we don't have those issues here. And so, and that's, that's a compliment to you all because I think everybody just gets along so well and it just, it just it works really well mm -hmm. here. We've been very blessed. Mm -hmm. I really have always yeah. felt that, that we've been very blessed here. And so uh, just we want to tell you, we don't take what we have here as a staff. We don't take what we have here for granted. We've got really great residents here. And so when I say that we love you, we really do. We love you very much. And we just uh, appreciate the opportunity to be working with you on a daily basis. So enjoy your Valentine's Day. We love you.